Ahoy folks, Craig from Pure Xbox here because today we're going to dig into a potential RPG old timer in the shape of Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Before we get going, this review was written by PJ O'Reilly for PureXbox.com, captured on Xbox Series X and adapted into video by me. Feast your eyes! <laughs> We mentioned in our recent review for Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name, that RGG Studios has been on an almighty roll of late when it comes to all things Yakuza related. As a result, this riotous series, so long overlooked by the mainstream audiences in the West, has finally become the sort of permanent fixture on best RPG lists that we have always reckoned it should have been. There's been a bit of a long-term plan to rejuvenate and redeploy highlights from across the history of this franchise in recent years, a drive in part to entice an all new generation of players to the wonders of beating thugs to a pulp whilst making strange new friends, learning completely unnecessary lessons and upsetting the locals with your karaoke caterwauling. Clearly not content with dropping a steady steam of choice cuts from its back catalogue, RGG has also ensured it continues hitting out with absolute belters when it comes to the latest entries in this longest running of gangster epics. One such belter, Yakuza Like a Dragon, released back at the start of 2020, and it introduced us to Ichiban Kasuga, the crazy-haired ex-convict turned hero with a heart of gold, in the series' first turn-based outing. Taking the button-mashy, arcade-styled action with which these games have become synonymous and replacing it with turn-based combat straight out of some fantasy-ass RPG might not have seemed like a great idea at the time, and it certainly had its detractors, but it very quickly became our preferred form of pugilism, and a move that feels as though it's breathed all sorts of new life and fresh possibilities into a setup that was definitely, and, and we know that Yakuza 6 and Yakuza 0 are all timers, but it had 100% begun to exhibit a little bit of wear and tear. Yakuza Like a Dragon was the best the series had ever felt mechanically at the time of its release. The story was gripping too, walking a fine line between genuine emotion, serious subject matter, and the usual slapstick and incredibly odd humor that these games always deliver so well on. Ichiban also managed to do the absolute impossible by filling the void left by Kazuma with style to spare, and the scale and scope of the world was a new high watermark in terms of side activities and silliness in which to indulge. And so, after the delightfully old-school Yakuza antics of the man who erased his name gave more traditionally-minded fans something to tuck into, here we are with the second helping of the new flavor in a sequel that's bigger, longer, and better in just about every way. So yes, we might as well just say it now. This may very well be the best game that RGG Studios has made to date which is an absolute ridiculous statement given some of the epic crime operas we've been treated to over the years for sure, but there it is. We've said it now. Just take the stupid money, will you? Huh? Where should we start with Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth? Like, really? Ichiban's return sets him off on an emotionally fraught journey. The family ties are strong with this one. What do I even call her? Mom? And with the new adventure comes a new paradise playground to knock around in, in the form of Hawaii. <laughs> this in itself would usually be enough to have us foaming at the mouth, an all new and distinctly different setting is a rarity for the series to be sure, but this time around we're also getting the return of big man himself, Kiryu Kazuma, as he joins forces with Kasuga in an effort to take down a new threat in the form of the island's shady Barracuda clan. That paradise you see, it's all smoke and mirrors. If we were to attempt to explain much more about the plot, well, we'd be ruining things. And we know some of the biggest and most shocking plot points are out there in Spoiler Land already, but let's just say that the narrative presented here tops Ichiban's first outing and gives us lots of time in the company of two of the strongest protagonists in gaming. And that's just facts. Guess we're doing this. <laughs> 
Too bad they don't know who they're dealing with. Ready to bust some heads, Kiryu-san? There's plenty of big old twists, some absolutely wild revelations, as many massively long cutscenes as anyone could ever ask for, and enough weird perverts, streakers, and smelly old men dressed as pickles to last us until at least Easter. What is this thing? Hello, happy. The writing is never an issue with these games though, is it? They deliver the goods every single time when it comes to the serious crime dramas infused with the type of madcap weirdness that Japan does best. We're as safe as we assumed we would be in that regard here. Then, and it's really in the effort to fill this world with worthwhile activities to give Hawaii a satisfying flow in how it introduces its sub-stories, characters and activities that does most to elevate this one beyond its predecessors. There's the usual gamut of real old school arcade games to play, Sega Bass Fishing or Virtua Fighter 3, anyone? You've also got darts and mahjong, proper CD dating apps and dating games, now with real models, blackjack, poker, karaoke, and all the jazz to boot. However, Infinite Wealth then goes way above and beyond in providing side activities and distractions that sit alongside the main story as genuinely worthy ways to spend your time. Gotcha. Ichiban's latest adventure turns Yakuza Like a Dragon's Sujumon Index, like Pokedex for thugs, into a full-on Pokemon tribute with stadium battles, trainers, fighter evolutions, and everything. It's got an entire island dedicated to ripping off Animal Crossing. Believe us when we tell you it's bloody addictive. And then they've gone and chucked in a fully fleshed out ode to Crazy Taxi just for the hell of it. Super crazy delivery! More than at any other point in this franchise's very long history, this stuff feels like a part of the main thrust of the game. These activities are more than mere distractions, and they're fed back into and layered on top of the base experience that was already bursting at the seams with silliness in which to engage. With regards to Hawaii itself, well, if we're being very picky, this is the one aspect of Infinite Wealth that doesn't deliver quite as much evolution as we'd, and probably unfairly, hoped that it might. Man, Hawaii's awesome! As great as it looks, as nice as it is to have a total change of atmosphere, it's still a little too similar in how it's laid out, in how it operates around you to feel like a real break from the past settings. Nancy? Are you in love? It does make up for this by being absolutely stuffed full of unexpected diversions, and there's a shady side of paradise being explored in interesting ways here. But this is still resolutely a Yakuza game for all of its advancements, and if you don't like them, then this won't change things, regardless of a new setting or combat refinements or anything else. <laughs> Oh, and let's just not forget about that combat, by the way. The overall flow of fights feels slicker and smoother this time out. And Like a Dragon's excellent job system returns in an expanded form, framing traditional RPG classes into the likes of Hero, Pyro Dancer, Action Star, and, uh, uh, Cabby? All of which with their own wild collection of moves and skills. Yeah. New team members are uniformly excellent. The battle banter is top notch because honestly, there's nothing funnier than Kasuga shouting, Take this fist. Take this fist and shove it. And we had a great time switching between Kiryu's various stances, which have been cleverly transferred to turn based combat here. There's also plenty of flashy tag team goodness for those who like to take down their foes in screen shaking style. Remember to take your pals drinking in order to strengthen your combo team skills. I am sorry. Well, you're forgiven. Let bygones be. <laughs> Indeed, this is a crucial point as more than any other entry in the series to date, this latest outing just seems to get how activities and rewards should flow into one another for maximum satisfaction. Come on. 
Thanks, yo. Time spent boozing, socializing, and indulging in side activities results in tangible improvements. Boosts and booms here. And that makes for a core gameplay experience that's never been better. So make sure to fill in those relationship bingo cards, folks. And we're not joking here as knowing your friends well brings important benefits when it comes time to smash some faces all over the beach promenade. Thanks. So here we are well over a thousand words into the review and we've barely scraped the surface to be honest, but such is the way with Yakuza. We haven't even mentioned the customizable segue that you get to blast around Hawaii on yet, have we? The most crucial point to be made in the end though is that what we have here is RGG Studio at its very best. We're not gonna spoil any of the surprises, but Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth gives us a meaningful and properly emotional journey of self-discovery amidst all of the excess for both Ichiban and Kiryu. It nails the tension, the violence, and the drama. It's got the best combat and side activities in the series to date, performs perfectly on Series X, and looks and sounds fantastic to boot. So, best Yakuza game to date? We reckon so. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth manages to wrangle all of the franchise's excesses, its crazy side activities, and epic storyline into an experience that feels more fluid and refined than ever before. If you thought Kiryu and Ichiban joining forces sounded hella good on paper, you're in for quite the treat. Yakuza Like a Dragon came close, but this fantastic follow-up manages to get a big fat 10 out of us. Now, whilst we can go on and on and on about every single detail packed into Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, we're happy to call it here and instead ask you what you think of what you've seen and heard so far. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to check out purexbox.com for more reviews like this one and subscribe to the channel here too. All that's left to say is bye-bye for now. Cheerio!